I'm a coach driver by trade and I live in a van. There's currently a fly attacking the lens on the camera. Let's make the best out of this situation. Wherever I stop at night, that's where I sleep. There's the van. It's a 2019 VW Crafter long wheelbase that I've converted into a camper van. This is where I parked up last night. Just look at how beautiful that little spot is. Now for my lifestyle and the way I live, this is perfect. There are three main reasons why I live in a van. Number one is pure convenience. Let me explain. So if I'm doing a long shift at work driving a coach, now keep in mind, we have a UK driver shortage in the UK. There is no drivers. So there's a lot of hours up for grabs. That's perfect for me. I want to smash the hours as hard as possible. Solely because I actually really enjoy the job. You see, I love traveling. I love exploring. Being a coach driver, it gets me out to all those different locations. However, the vehicles that I drive, I can't tell you the company or anything. We have a social media policy that bans all that sort of stuff. Let's face it, one social media post could destroy a company these days. So we're not allowed to talk about the company. But I can do shifts ranging from eight hours to multi-man 21 hour shifts. And that is actually a regular thing. At least once a week, I'll be doing a 20 hour shift. A couple of times a week, I'll be doing a 15 hour shift. I work strongly, tightly to my driving hours. Because just like truck drivers, coach drivers also have to adhere to driving regulations. We have a tachograph just like them. I finish a long shift at work. The last thing I want to do is drive to a location that I'm paying an absolute fortune for, that I'm never actually there. So I'll drive to a location very close to work because chances are I've only got nine hours off or 11 hours off, depending on where I am on my driving hours. I'll just pull up there, pass out in the back on the big king size bed and that'll be me for the night but then when it comes to like my days off or if i've got a long break between shifts i love just going off and exploring i like to get out there and do stuff if it's been a short shift but i'm finishing late at night how i'll drive down to snowdonia where i've located myself i'm an hour and a half from snowdonia i'm an hour and a half from the lake district and i'm an hour and 15 minutes away from the peak district i'm perfectly located for every adventure that i love to do i'll finish work head down to snowdonia i'm not tired i've only done an eight hour shift or something i'll go climb snowdon for the sunrise i'll go up to the lake district and go kayaking and paddle boarding in the lakes or like today where i kind of want to save as much money as possible because i've got a huge adventure coming up soon i just come somewhere fairly local to work i'm going to get the bike out go for a big mountain bike ride we've got the lake i'm going to go jump in there later with the kayak or the paddle board depending on the weather and stuff like that tell you what let's continue this after we've got the bike out and get on gone on a bike ride i may live in a van but i've got a lot of toys to play with you'll see that throughout the rest of this video if we have a look at the back of the bed there's me paddle board and a couple of chairs they were in the boot but i got them out earlier because i know for a fact i'm going to get the bike out that looks like a big hill. I don't think I'll be going up there because I'm fat and not very healthy. In the back of the van, we've got the double bed up there. Like I say, we've got the kayak, uh, the paddle board just there. Another box there, some chairs there because I pulled them out earlier. We've got the kayak just here so we can have a kayak. We've got the bike just here. <laughs> we've got loads of stuff under there. The bike just comes out, sets up perfectly. It's the Hofsco A5 Mountain Cruiser. I absolutely love this. I've done loads of uh, little adventures on this. Only little ones because I'm fat and unhealthy. I drive a coach for a living. What do you expect? It's an electrically assist bike. It's got a 250 watt motor just there. Seven speed Shimano Dralia setup just there. I don't know too much about bikes, but it's 250 kilowatts with 12.5 amp hour battery, 450 watt hour. That's enough battery storage to be able to do up to 60 mile on this bike. It's locked into place with the keys just there. You've got your on button and you can charge it while it's still on the bike just there. Me personally, I charge this solely through solar power. I'll show you that a bit later. You've got a quick release seat and a quick release front wheel. So I can have this fitted underneath the bed inside the van. Change the gears here, up, down. You've even got the cool little bow. Yeah, I know it's cheesy. I've done 31 kilometers in it. I'm currently doing no speed. It's currently got near enough for full battery. I did do six kilometers in it yesterday, so that is likely to drop quite soon. That is your torque sensor. It tells you how much power you're putting it in. And to, this down here is the electrical assist. So you tell it how much assist you want it to give you. So if you're riding up a hill, just give it a little bit more extra assist. If you're not roll, rolling down a hill, you can take the assist straight off. We've got cool disc brakes front and back. And I absolutely love this bike. I've had it on beach trails. I've had it on top of hills doing circulars. Let's go and burn some calories, shall we? The thing I love about the electrical assist is you can go further and not be as knackered as you naturally would be. I'm wearing light colored joggers. 
<laughs> what's the chances they're going to be muddy riding around that reservoir wow. we figured since we're actually showing you guys this bike and what it can actually do we'll take it on all different types of trails here's a lovely little forestry trail that we've been on it's absolutely handling it like a trooper how did a car bumper get all the way down there we're just on a mad train. This shows you the electrical assist in full action. You can see me struggling there, just upped it, and then look how simple it was to just sort of get that extra kick to get up that hill. This bike will do 60 mile on one charge, apparently. The first 20 mile that I used it, it only drained a third of the battery. So it looks like that's true. Don't think because it's electrically assisted that it's easier. It still gives you a good heart pump getting up the hill. I love the way it gives you the speed on the actual digital display so you can really tell how fast and how far you're sort of going. I love keeping the track of the odometer as well. It tells you how many miles the bike has completely done. There's some really nice little trails around here, some tiny little things. You wouldn't think it's been 20 years since I got on a bike and now all of a sudden I'm loving it again. I'm in love with hiking and outdoor adventure because it gets me out, it escapes. This does exactly the same, but I get to see more. All's while giving my heart a really good pump and a really good bit of exercise. This is definitely gonna up my cardio and I'm gonna have loads of fun in the process doing it as well just like nearly falling down these hills. I used to do this as a kid, now I've got to learn it all again. It only weighs 15 pounds, so it's easy to get over the gates if you need to. Another reason why I love to live in a van, reason number two out of three, is six years ago, God, it may, may even been seven years ago, I had a toxic relationship breakdown. It resulted in me sleeping in my car for three months over winter. And although that makes you go, oh, what a, it's nothing like that, because it was more, I was at peace with myself. I had a massive weight lifted off my shoulders. It took a few months, I was going for a breakup, so it wasn't all happy and singing and dancing. But I was sleeping under the stars, and it was just, it was me. I was at peace, do you know what I mean? I, after the first few weeks anyway, after the sort of initial, oh no, I've broken up, oh, what am I gonna do? It was happy. I was looking up at the stars, I was still going to work, I was outdoors, I was parking down the beach and everything, it was great. But since then, I got myself a little flat, and I just, from the day that I moved into that flat, I moved in with just a carrier bag of work clothes. That's all I took with me while I was sleeping in my car. So I moved in with just that. And it just never felt homely, if that makes sense. It just didn't feel, I was never at peace. It was more of a burden because there was overhead, there was rent, there was bills, there was trying to figure out how to do things. I don't know, I guess the word you can say is freedom. You just feel free. Oh, there's a deer over there. Ah, oh, how cool is that? Just sat there by the side. I'll tell you what, the water's really low here. Anyway, let's keep riding, head back towards the van and I'll tell you number three. I'll tell you what though, the bike is doing really well. It comes with an accessory pack if you buy it now. I'll leave a link in the description down below and I'll show you the accessory pack when we get back. But it comes with this little phone holder as well, which is great because it fits my phone with my phone case on it and stuff like that. But yeah, anyway, it's good. The bike so far, let me turn the computer back on while I've been parked up. So we've done 36 kilometers so far. I've still got near enough a full battery. Yeah, it's doing really well so far. And the sun's even come out to say hello. It just goes to show how dry we've had the summer so far. The reservoirs are empty. We're back. There's the bike outside the van. We've got the coffee machine with the coffee just brewing. So let's talk about the third one. This is the one I think everyone sort of wants to know about van life. What does it cost? Is it better to do this? Financially, yes, a hell of a lot better. Let's face it, I've got no rent. I've got no council tax. I've got no TV license, no electric bill, no gas bill, no nothing like that. It's, you Can you imagine, think of your wages, your income, and then take all that away from it. That is all disposable income for you. I mean, that's insane to think about it. Let's talk, so, electric for this van. At the minute, it's not solar powered. You can get solar panels on the roof, which will charge up a leisure battery, which means all your insides of your van is gonna be free electricity. Me, I've got what's called a DC to DC charger, a Victron, and that's connected to the alternator on the van. So as I'm driving along, the alternator of the van is charging up my leisure battery. The more miles I do, the fuller the battery gets. When it gets full, it just stops charging it, just like it does your normal car battery. In this drawer just here, I've got this. This is a power bank, and that can be charged up through portable solar panels. You can also charge it through like campsites. You can go on, onto a campsite, charge it up through there for your normal mains 240 volt sort of stuff. You can charge it up through the in-car charger on the van. Again, it's free electricity. Your water bill, there's tons of places around the UK where you can fill up your water completely free. Think about how much it costs to own a normal car 
add a little bit more on top of it because a van is more expensive. I get 40 miles to the gallon. My road tax is a little bit more expensive. Just general maintenance is a little bit more expensive on a van compared to a car. So what I'm going to do in a bit is click on that. So I've got 52% battery on that at the minute. It's currently plugged into my coffee machine. I've got air fryer and all that sort of stuff to plug into it too. Underneath here, air fryer, toaster, everything you want. Out here, the battery from that is going to come down to there with me. We're going to plug in a portable solar panel to that. So that's going to be charging up through solar. And then that's going to be charging that battery. So it's going to be 100% free solar electricity that's charged the battery up on that i do really really enjoy that bike but let's show you what comes in the accessory pack inside the actual pack this actually comes with the bike perfectly fine you've got your normal manual your warranty card some other important bits and bobs you sort of read that before you start riding it you you get a little box here this has got your plugs you've got obviously i've charged it up before but a full plug sort of setup to be able to plug it in and charge it you've got some extra adapters if you want to turn it to fully electric you can do perfectly fine with that you've got a light which i haven't put on because i tend not to ride at night time an allen key and the keys to be able to get the battery off you can charge the bike up without having to take the battery off you just plug it straight into the bike but being able to just take the battery off means you can take it into your home your house your office your work or anything like that to be able to charge it up perfectly fine this is the essentials bundle it says so this is the accessory pack you get this free if you order it currently now and they say it costs 200 pounds inside it you've got a bike pump a foot bike pump i actually use this with my hands because when the bike initially comes it's not pumped up with the tires so it's just like that you've got a pressure gauge and the adapter you take that off like that and pump it away like just like I like the nozzle on this because you've got two different adapters so you can do it on like a sports bike and a normal bike so if you're going out with your family you only need to take one pump instead of one pump for every bike you've got your normal insulated sort of bottle that comes with it along with a bottle cage which is in that one just there full disclosure i couldn't figure out how to fit the bottle cage onto the bike maybe that's for the city cruiser or something along those lines you've got a phone mount which is the phone mount that i've already got attached to the bike you've got loads of different mounting brackets to be able to attach that to the bike over here a bike lock and now that, that is a really really heavy duty heavy sturdy coded buck like it's a full chain look at that and it's real heavy duty and last but not least a full multi-tool this has got all the little gadgets you need to be doing while you're actually on the bike it comes with all the tools to be able to build the bike up that's just a multi-tool you can chuck in your backpack to be able to get you going and building the bike is very very straightforward you attach the front wheel quick release adjust the seat height quick release adjust the brakes you've got little toggles on the brakes i found i needed to adjust one of the brakes just to make it that bit sharper for me and from a dead battery to a fully charged battery, four to sort of eight hours, it says. I've never really charged it from empty because, like I say, I've not done over 60 miles on it. I charged it once just to top it up, and I'm probably going to put it on charge now just to make sure it is topped up for the next time I use it. Now, as a coach driver, I need to guarantee that I get a good, adequate amount of good quality sleep. I need it to be on the road, especially here in the UK on the motorways doing 500 mile a day on our uk motorways it's a dangerous place to be there's too many distractions now people using their phones you see so many accidents i've never understood how people can have accidents on motorways when it's just a straight road if you keep enough distance to the car in front of you or the vehicle in front of you you're okay keep out of trucks blind spots you're okay don't use your mobile phone i'm ranting i'm ranting i'm sorry how do i guarantee a good night's sleep i've got a full king size bed just there if i go down to norfolk to see my son which i do quite often these two seats they turn into a single bed we've got all the bedding and stuff like that but the van is also highly highly sound deadened and insulated if you want to see the video on how i actually built this van i'll leave it linked in the um, description down below but i'll show you how well we're insulated right now you can hear a motorway in the distance you can hear the trees rustling you can hear the odd car go past see what i mean i'm going to shut this door All you can hear right now is the sound of my fridge whirling away just a little bit because it's just kicked in. I can increase that sound deadening by using the blinds just there. If you didn't hear that, that was a car that went past at 30 odd miles an hour. You didn't hear it. I've, I've not heard it back, so I don't know. And I've got curtains just here, which I can block them out too. I make sure I park in extremely quiet locations where there is nobody. 
literally nobody, no cars, no traffic, no noise. And that just guarantees me a good night's sleep. It's strange because I've never slept as well as what I do when I'm inside the van. But after all this effort that I do by riding bikes, going kayaking, doing a general adventurous lifetime, how do I shower? I'll be honest, on TikTok, Instagram and everything, that is my most asked question, how do you shower? There's a million different ways you can shower whilst living in a van. I'll tell you my personal ones. I've got a portable shower. I can set the water temperature, have a shower, perfectly fine. It's not an issue. I tend to do it out there, just on the side, just there sometimes. But that's when I'm in really remote locations, partly because my gym, I'm with JD Gyms. And where I like to go, out in the middle of absolute nowhere, there isn't a JD Gym. But when I'm local, JD Gyms. I go for a workout, I have a shower, I jump in the sauna, I revitalize myself. That's a great way of doing it. Number two, motorway services. Or oh, that's number three. Motorway services have shower. Take your flip-flops. The floors are a bit minging after all the truckers and stuff. You can get a solar shower. You stick a black bag on the roof that's full of water. That heats up through the day. You can shower yourself off at night. I've got this tap. And yes, it's just a trickle. I need to up the pump. But I've also got this button which sprays. And it comes out and it sprays around. That's great. If I'm just stood outside, I just want to rinse myself off quickly. That's perfect. Or it will be when I get a better pump. I have showers in work. There's, if I occasionally stay in a hotel with, with work, I have showers there. I can go to my partner's house because believe it or not, I actually have a partner. I don't know how she puts up with me. I have no idea how she puts up with me. Anyway, I'll have a shower at hers if I ever spend the night at hers. You can even jump in a spring-fed lake with some biodegradable, um, environmentally friendly shampoos and stuff. Just not there because it's a reservoir. You don't want your drinking water to taste like bio-helpful, animal-friendly, shampoos and stuff do you you just don't how do i cook so i've got my coffee machine it's a gadget that i love because on this channel we love our gadgets under here we've got the air fryer we've got a toaster up there we've got a portable gas stove there's news agents for snacks there's tesco's for meal deals there's carveries i'm a sucker for a carvery eat out takeaways there's loads of ways you can support yourself healthily whilst being in a van store everything in our fridge just there but the sun's out in and out the clouds are looking a bit rough but i'm going to get the portable solar panel down there with the battery pack and get the bike on charge still debating whether or not to go in the kayak or the paddleboard into that reservoir it's a reservoir we're not really supposed to and i probably won't well i don't know times will change we'll see i'm going to put my phone on charge on the wireless charger while i do that look at that for a view but yeah the water is normally right up underneath these trees so i'm going to make the most of it while i can First off, I'll pull that over because I want to get the most of the solar panel, so I'll pull that just like that. I'll plug the solar panel straight into there, just like that, and we'll see how many watts this is actually bringing in. 122 watts are coming in just purely from solar. So if we get the battery just here, plug it into just there, turn the AC plugs on, and then plug this into the battery, just like that and we should see that number drop slightly currently there's 80 watts going out of the unit so that means 122 is coming from the solar panel into that and then 122 plus 80 more is going straight into that so when that's fully charged that'll just start charging up directly from that but as the sun intensifies that's going to charge up a lot more while it's charging just down there Let's go and see how windy it is on the reservoir, see whether it's worth getting the kayak out. Charging over there. Looks a bit choppy. It's amazing what you see. Look at the size of that. That's a muscle shell. Look at the what? You can't even hear what I'm saying with the wind that's battering the camera right now, but it's a little bit too choppy for my skill level. Just look at how low the water level is. It's normally up on this embankment just here, and it's all the way down there. It's normally all the way up here too. It normally goes right up to that bridge there. So yeah, it's a little bit windy and choppy at the minute. But I'll check the weather forecast, see if it's going to chill out a bit later. I'm going to make myself some noodles. I do hardly use this little gas stove. That's why it's only just a little one. I, I might get a hob fitter hob in somewhere. I don't know. Either way, just a very, very quick, easy meal just to uh, get rid of me cravings for a snack. I think they're cooked nicely. Curry flavour, yep. Nice little meal just to tie me over until tea. Still a little bit windy to get the kayak out. I wonder if the other reservoir will do. An hour later, the battery is back up to being fully charged, just purely through solar power. So it just links into there, just like that, and click. Take the key out for security, give it a check, perfect. That's the Hofsco A5 Mountain Cruiser ready for its next adventure. We've got the bike away, 
bikes just there, kayaks just there, paddle boards just there, all the other stuff just down the back. If you have any more questions on how I live in a van and any tips you want, or if you get any questions at all, drop them in the comments down below. If you want to check out the Hosco A5 Mountain Cruiser, that's all going to be linked in the description down below. If you're new around here, subscribe. I'm going to get the AS2000 and solar panel back up, and then I'm going to go find somewhere to have a little paddle board and then head out for tea tonight. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Peace out.